For as far back as I can remember, I've been going to communion and receiving communion on the hand. I've never thought twice about it. Everybody else around me does it. Priests, bishops, they all say that's how we do it here in America. Until recently, when I discovered through the Trinity Mass, the Latin Mass, the Mass of all times, that the most reverent way to receive the Eucharist is by kneeling and on the tongue. Now I suppose if you don't believe that Christ is truly present in the Eucharist, it doesn't matter how you receive it or even why to receive it. Which is probably why not so many Catholics are going to Mass anymore. Which is also probably why there's a lot of Catholics leaving the church. Because if we truly believe that Christ is present in body, blood, soul, and divinity, every Catholic would be going to Mass to receive communion. Churches would be packed. Religious vocations skyrocketing. The world would be a much better place. You see, the greatest object in the entire universe is the Eucharist, because it is Him, Jesus Christ, truly present. And because of this, we need to think twice about how we receive Him. I like what Bishop Athanasius Schneider tells us about the Eucharist and how important it is to receive it kneeling and on the tongue. Let's take a look at what he has to say. First, I would like to say and uh, return once again to my parish priest sure. in Estonia. He led me to the First Holy Communion. It, is, it was secretly and we received. It was for us so uh, uh, great, the Holy Communion. So great. For me as a child, we had to kneel down. Uh, we were aware here, here, here is God with His majesty, sanctity, but also with His love, of course. Yeah. It is all together. We cannot separate the love and the sanctity of God. And, it, and in fact, too, just to, so folks remember, <coughs> for you as a little boy to receive Holy Communion, to be even go to church, was against the law. Yes. And then when we traveled to Germany, I remember when we said farewell to our Holy Father Pavlovsky, he told us a thing that was for us a shock. I remember. He told us, be aware, when you will go to Germany, there are some churches, 73, there are some churches where they distribute the Holy Communion in the hand of the people. And we said, Father, it is impossible. Uh, we were shocked. I was as a child shocked. It was impossible for me. How it is possible in such a mm, banal manner, such as a cake, to, um, uh, yes, to, to manage our Lord, to it was for me as a child and for my mother and for all, we were astonished. And he, he consoled us, but only in some places. Please not enter these churches. And we promised our holy saint priest, oh yes, Father, we will not go to these churches. And then we arrived in Germany, and the first church we entered to Holy Mass, all first, all, almost all the people received in the hand. We were shocked. Then my mother said to us, children, we will never go to this church. And the, but this was a city, there were only four Catholic churches. Then we went to the next church, the same. <coughs> next Sunday, we went to the next, the third church, the same situation. And then to the last church, the same situation. And when I remember when we came home from the from this last church, my mother began to weep. How they make what they make with our Lord so superficially. We could only to weep, and this profoundly um, impressed my soul as child already. 
And then wha when I became priest and studied, especially the, the church fathers, I noticed the profound spirit of reverence uh, of them. <coughs> and this, what you mentioned, it is um, a myth, a legend, I will say. It is an incorrect information which was given to the faithful from the priests and even from the bishops. So, that, th so that, th it, uh, th there's a myth or, or, or a legend that's not factual about not. communion in the hands? This was intentionally, perhaps, <coughs> because, uh, firstly, we cannot, as we told, uh, simply, um, how do you say, return to a practice of the 4th or 5th century. No it more than you and I can return to not having to shave. Uh, it is anachronistically and is against the law of, of growing. And another, because um, the, the Holy Communion was distributed in another manner as today. Nobody was allowed to touch with the finger the Holy Sacrament. It is important to notice this. So that in, in the, the early church, time, you, even if the lay people had not uh, the permission to touch with the fingers, okay. the, the blessed sacrament was um, put in the, the carf, the palm, the palm of the, the hand, palm of the hand, mm -hmm. of the right hand, not of the left hand. Today, everyone receives in the left hand. It would be for the ancient fathers uh, horror to receive the most holy in the left hand. How it is possible? <coughs> And then, the, in the right hand, you have to receive. <coughs> and then, to incline your head profoundly. To bow your head. To bow your head mm -hmm. profoundly and pick up directly with the mouth the Holy Sacrament. Therefore, it was a communion in the mouth, not in the hand, in reality. Because the people received directly with the mouth the Holy Sacrament but in an incli inclination, profound, with a gesture of reverence, the man, <coughs> and <coughs> immediately <coughs> uh, uh, before, they had to clean the hand, because we touch so many things, right. even uh, money, which is so dirty. Right. And then with this hand, we go to the, uh, to the most holy sacrament, which contradiction? Exterior. So, so in the early church, before they would receive communion, they had to clean the, the, the palm. Right. And after receiving, they had to, to pick up all the fragments that no one fragment will fall down. And some of the fathers would even speak <laughs> of how <coughs> from each fragment, thousands of people could be saved. Yes. <coughs> and you know, because I it's so this precious. in my book, yes. of course. And the next point, that the woman ha was not allowed to receive directly on the hand. The woman had to put a, um, a white uh, corporal, uh, how do you say? A, wi a white cloth that a we, white we call the corporal. A corporal. Mm -hmm. And on the corporal was put uh, the body of Christ. And from the corporal, even also in the same manner, reverently, bowing down, receiving the blessed sacrament, and then um, cleaning the clothes from fragments that no one will uh, <coughs> um, be lost. But even so, the church instinctively in the East and in the West notice that we have to improve gesture of reverence, improve, and to um, that the risk that some fragment could fall down will be diminished and therefore the church it was an organic um, development organic as fruit of the veneration of the fathers the church began to administer directly in the mouth <coughs> and one of the things that I also have heard, though, and from the proponents of receiving communion in the hand, is that, look, I'm an adult, and I feed myself, 
so I can receive communion and give it to myself uh, because, you know, this is uh, something that I'm old enough to do. I don't need somebody to feed me like I was a baby. How would you respond to such this criticism? This is profoundly wrong. And this is not corresponding to the, to the spirit of the gospel, to the spirit of Christianity. Because our Lord said we have to become children. Yes. Children. When you do not become children, you cannot, you cannot enter the uh, kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, he said that in the context <coughs> of the apostles arguing amongst themselves which one was the greatest apostle. And after they were arguing, he put a little child in their midst yes. and said, unless you become yes. like little children. And we have to be you um, can't the kingdom in front of God, in front of Christ, who is nourishing us with his blood, like children, to receive. We can only receive from God. And it is more mm, convenient that we receive the Holy Communion as children. And children, you give the nourishment on the, in the mouth, the little well, children. Th that one of the quotations you give is from uh, the great uh, doctor of the church, St. John Chrysostom, who said, just like a little baby, it automatically goes to open its mouth to suckle at its yes, mother's yes. Uh, breast. So also must we open our mouths like little like children. children. Uh, not only St. John Chrysostom, other fathers wrote about this. This is a common, uh, common place in, in the church fathers. And I think this is the deepest. We have to go deeper, deeper. Uh, and therefore, it was very wise from the church. The Holy Ghost guided the church through all the times, even through the Middle Ages. And therefore, we have to um, discover and um, re-esteem made this treasure what we received from the church fathers passing from the generations f until our generations, our fathers, our grandfathers mm -hmm. also this received in such a manner and they gave us this veneration. It is sad to know that when we receive the Eucharist in the hand, literally, we step on Christ because fragments inevitably will fall off the hands, off the fingers, onto the floor. Ever since the introduction of the Eucharist on the hand had, has been introduced, abuse has occurred and continue to occur. Take a look at an example of what I'm talking about here. How in the last past World Youth Days, the Eucharist has been abused. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Matt for the Remnant Forum. Well, it's happened once again. Another scandal involving abuse of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament taking place under the very nose of a visiting Holy Father. This time it was in Manila, the last time it was in Rio de Janeiro, where a gathering of millions of World Youth Day enthusiasts on the beach received Holy Communion from plastic cups before, before many of them stripped down to their bathing suits and jumped into the sea for a swim. Now that one was called the largest abuse of Holy Communion in the history of the Church, and indeed it may well have been so. Of course, we're all getting used to these spectacles of sacrilege. This is nothing new. I was in Des Moines, Iowa, way back in 1979, when Pope John Paul came to town. And I remember seeing the lines of motorcycle gang members grabbing whole handfuls of Holy Communion hosts from makeshift baskets and then washing them down with cold cans of beer. We've all become used to the spectacle. And I guess the question is, do Catholics believe and just not care anymore? Or is it the case of Catholics simply having lost their faith in the real presence altogether in the Eucharist? It's really very difficult to tell the difference, especially at four youth days and big papal masses. But the more pressing question is, why does this keep happening? Why is the Vicar of Christ treated like God 
while God himself is treated with all the reverence due to a bag of Doritos at these great spectacle masses. This doesn't happen, by the way, at Notre Dame de Chartres, the great cathedral in France on Pentecost Monday, where some 10,000 pilgrims, all young, receive Holy Communion while kneeling and always on the tongue with great reverence. And 10,000 pilgrims packed into the old Chartres Cathedral is just as much of a logistical challenge for the distribution of Holy Communion is concerned as several million on a beach at Rio. And yet the very highest consideration is given by the French to make sure that communion does not become an occasion of mass sacrilege on that pilgrimage. So why does sacrilege matter for the French on that pilgrimage, but it doesn't matter at papal masses, where by rights it should matter more, since the whole world is watching? Why does this sacrilege take place beneath the Holy Father's very nose, time and again, with no one taking any steps to stop it? Obviously, if we believe that Jesus Christ is present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the sacrament of the altar, then whatever good comes from these massive papal pep rallies really must be considered to be eclipsed by the infinite offense to Almighty God that takes place each and every time the Pope comes to town. So the bottom line is this. If the Vatican and the Pope and the bishops of a host country can do nothing to stop the outrage, indifference, and sacrilege, by which our Lord is offended in the Blessed Sacrament at these Masses, then obviously it's time to put an end to these Masses, whose point and purpose are ill-defined, and whose long-term positive impact on souls or on the life of the Church is nebulous at best. At the very least, stop distributing Holy Communion to the millions of Catholics, and yes, non-Catholics and tourists, who show up for these media-driven papal circuses, Administer Holy Communion to those closest to the sanctuary, and then be done with it. Why? Because this is sacrilege, and it's time to stop it. It's time to stop the sacrilege, especially when it's taking place in such a public form in front of the international cameras of the press and media from all around the world. Now what we are seeing here is also the communion in the hand chickens coming home to roost. Communion in the hand is an abuse that has now become part of the life of the Church. Communion in the Hand was reintroduced into the Catholic Church as an act of rebellion soon after Vatican II. It began in Holland as an arbitrary act of defiance of legitimate authority. Mandatory liturgical norms were defied and communion was distributed in some Catholic churches in what had been, since the Reformation, a characteristically Protestant manner of receiving the Hand. It was an abuse and should have been dealt with by the bishops immediately and effectively. Priests who refused to conform to the law of the church should have been suspended where this communion in the hand is concerned. Such action, however, was not taken and the practice spread to Germany, Belgium, and France. In these countries, the bishops who betrayed their office and allowed the abuse to go unchecked. Thus, a practice which had already been unacceptable to Catholics because of its adoption by Protestants to symbolize their rejection of Catholic Eucharistic teaching was made doubly unacceptable when it became a symbol of the rejection of ecclesiastical authority by liberal Catholics now in the Church. The consequences of this rebellion became so serious that the Pope consulted the bishops of the world and after obtaining their opinions, promulgated the instruction, Memorialia Domine, in 1969. 1969! Now, the principal points contained in this document from modern times, this is not the Middle Ages, are number one, the bishops of the world were overwhelmingly against the innovation of communion in the hand. Number two, the traditional manner of distributing Holy Communion must be retained. Number three, it is a sign of reverence which does not detract from the dignity of the communicant to receive on the tongue. And number four, the innovation could lead to irreverence, profanity, and adulteration of correct doctrine. However, a calamitous error of judgment then followed. It was agreed that wherever the practice had already developed in any place, a two-thirds majority of the Episcopal Conference could petition the Holy See for permission to legalize the abuse. 
And that, in a nutshell, is the history of communion in the hand and how it was reintroduced into the Catholic Church. Now I know it is an accepted practice here in America and in different parts of the world. And one could argue that because it is accepted, that's the way we, could, we should do it. But all one has to do is look at documents, do some research, and they will find out that the universal preference, the universal norm of the church is to receive Eucharist on the tongue. But even so, take that away. That still doesn't change the fact that Christ is present in the Eucharist. And that those fragments that are on our hands, that could, be, that could fall, are still Christ. Christ expects the best from us, and we owe it to Him because He is so loving to give back our best to Him. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by receiving Him kneeling and on the tongue. If you're like me and find it difficult to receive communion in the hands, find another church. Find a church that appreciates, preserves, and practices the sacredness of tradition. Even if it takes you an hour, two hours, Christ deserves at least that to be received in the most reverent way. God bless you.